Hi again. We have already studied the idea of using exchanges to finish the game, basically, to give a checkmate or to avoid a checkmate or to get a draw whenever we have a bad position. But exchanges can be combined with tactical ideas. They can be used as a starting point or prelude to pretty much any tactic. Not only forcing a checkmate, but to any of the many tactics that we can have in chess. And besides forcing a draw or giving a checkmate, tactics are very often used to gain material. That's why we're going to study some cases on which we use an exchange in order to get a tactic to win material. Now let's first start with this position, which is very instructive. Here white has a very nice position. White is putting pressure on f7. On the other hand, we need to be a bit careful because the queen on a4 is being attacked. So for example, taking on f7 would be very bad because black would capture the queen. Although white can capture the rook, black would win material here. On the other hand, it is possible to capture on f7 because we give a check. Black doesn't have time to take the queen. And after king to d8, white gets an extra pawn, a better position. White can take on c6. This is a possible way to continue the game. But on the other hand, here white played a much better move, at least from the practical point of view. White capture on c6. At least briefly, we need to double check if a capture is good or not. And taking on c6 will actually lead to white winning material, because white will use one of the most common tactics, which is called the pin. So here, black capture with the knight. Taking with the queen would be even worse, because after bishop to b5, we get this pin on the queen. Black cannot move the queen because it would expose the king. That's why here, white gains a lot of material. And if black captures with the knight, as it happened in the game, white again pinned the knight, this time with the pawn, and played the move d5. And again, there's no way for black to deal with that, because the knight cannot move. It is being attacked by the queen and the pawn. So white is going to win a piece. For example, after queen to e5, white can simply stop that check with the bishop, and the game is pretty much over. So although we are very often aware of the tactical ideas, it is very common to miss a tactic that comes after a capture. In this position, here black is a pawn down and is trying to defend. Black could have continued with rook to g8, attacking this pawn, and white is trying to win. This is a complicated position for black, but it was much better than what happened in the game. Here black played the move rook to h1, which is just a very bad move. So if I tell you that we have a double attack on the king on d5 under rook on h1, you would probably see that in one move. But if we get this tactic after a capture, then it's probably a bit harder to see it. But in any case, after the move rook to f5, giving a check, king to e6, white capture on d5, and if black captures on d5, then here white will simply play bishop to e4, and we get this attack on the king and the rook, and this is a very common tactic which is called the double attack or the fork, and here white will just get the rook and be a piece up and a pawn up, so this is going to be easily winning. So this fork is very easy to see in this current position, that's why we need to consider exchanges that might lead to a winning tactic. So, so far we've seen exchanges in order to get a tactical idea that would make us win material, but we can actually use this idea of exchanging pieces in order to limit the damage. So whenever we're going to lose a piece, it is better to exchange it for something, even if it's a piece of weaker value. Let's evaluate this position. Black seems to be in a lot of trouble. Black has this queen that is pretty much trapped. It cannot move anywhere. C7 and A7 are controlled by the knight. And if black tries to block this attack, for example, by playing knight to D6, White has many ways to win, but the simple way is, again, another double attack, queen to e5. We attack the king and the knight, and white is winning a lot of material. But black came up with a very creative move, and played the move rook to d1. Which is actually a tactical idea. Black wants to bring the king to d1, which would be a square on which the queen cannot defend the rook on e6. So this tactic is called a deflection. So for example, if white takes the queen, then black can capture on e6, and white is still doing fine, white is a pawn up, but black is trying to hold with these three pawns against four on the queen side, but this is not as clear as what was played in the game. Taking the queen was possible, but here black would capture the queen, and after king to f2, 
Black again will try to defend this position, which is still very good for white. But here white used this tactical idea of capturing material before giving a piece that was lost anyways. This tactic is called Desperado. And the point is that this rook is going to be lost if white captures the rook on d1. That's why before giving that rook, white can exchange that rook for another piece. Even if it's a piece of lower value, it is better than giving it for nothing. So here white played the very strong rook takes g6, which gives a check. And here black captures with the pawn, but it doesn't really change a lot if black captures with the king or the queen. And after taking on g6, only then white captured the rook. And after these exchanges, white got another pawn. So now white has two extra pawns, which makes the advantage even more decisive. So exchanges can be combined with tactics, not only to win material, but also to get some material in exchange for a piece that will be lost anyways.